This is a mechanism of disease map for pneumonia. We're going to be talking about how pneumonia is caused, the pathogenesis, the mechanism of disease, as well as some of the signs, symptoms, and other lab manifestations of pneumonia, pleural effusion, and associated conditions. So first, here's a key of everything we're going to be talking about. I'm going to be listing out a bunch of boxes, and they'll kind of be color-coded according to this legend up here. As I mentioned, we'll be talking about the risk factors of pneumonia, we'll work through the pathophys, the disease process, and then end with the manifestations of the disease. So let's get started. First, there's a set of risk factors that increase your chance of getting pneumonia by impairing your airway protection. For instance, you can have a stroke, you can have a seizure, both of those make it difficult to swallow, difficult to um, get the secretions from your mouth down to your stomach as opposed to down to your lungs into your airway. This can also be iatrogenic. During anesthesia, you can get um, impaired airway protection as well. Drug and alcohol use can cause this. Think of a drunk person being unable, unable to swallow or somebody who's maybe on opioids or benzos um, might not be able to swallow like they normally can. A variety of esophageal lesions can cause this as well. Um, they cause dysphagia and dysmotility of the esophagus, which leads to impaired airway protection. In addition, when you have a viral respiratory tract infection, like having the flu, this can impair your immune system and then also lead to a pneumonia. A social determinant of health that's associated with this is a crowded living condition, such as in prisons, homeless shelters, those can cause people to get viral tract infections, sorry, viral respiratory tract infections like influenza, which then predisposes them to pneumonia. Another social determinant of health is environmental toxins like solvents, paints, or gasoline. These can directly cause respiratory tract irritation, which can predispose you to pneumonia. And lastly, there are a few chronic comorbidities like COPD, congestive heart failure, and diabetes that through a variety of mechanisms, some of them incompletely understood, can cause a pneumonia. So all of these are the risk factors that eventually lead to a pathogen infection. Um, that pathogen can be bacterial, fungal, or viral. We're mostly talking about the bacterial stuff here, but these can also predispose you to, fung to fungal and viral infections as well. Once you have that pathogen infection, there's a series of steps that lead to the damage of the cells and of the tissues. So the microbes that are infecting you are gonna have some virulence factors. Those can cause direct cellular damage, which then triggers an inflammatory response that can then cause tissue damage surrounding those cells. When you have an accumulation of mucus and immune cells, you then get antibodies and inflammatory mediators in the alveoli. And these then cause a series of other downstream issues that lead to pneumonia manifestations. And that's what we're going to get into. So let's start up here. The accumulation of mucus and immune cells cause antibodies and inflammatory mediators in the alveoli. You then have altered transmission of sound in the fluid-filled alveoli. This itself can cause decreased or consolidated lung sounds on your lung exam. In addition, you can have diffuse heterogeneous airway obstruction, which causes blocked airways to be forced open with deep inspiration. And this is the physiology behind crackles that you might also hear on an airway exam. In addition, diffuse heterogeneous airway obstruction can cause a VQ mismatch, a ventilation perfusion mismatch. This results in altered blood chemistries where you become acidic, your pH is low, that, which also means you have a high PCO2 and a low PaO2. This is the manifestation of hypoxemia. In addition, the hypoxemia can cause another problem. Hypoxemia can trigger these peripheral sensory receptors, which detect the hypoxia and then stimulate the central nervous system to drive activation of the respiratory system. This leads to an increased work of breathing. So your body is essentially detecting that you're low on oxygen and your brain triggers you to breathe more and increase your work of breathing. This is dyspnea and this is tachypnea. So you're gonna be short of breath and you're gonna be breathing rapidly, also manifestations of pneumonia. In addition, all of this immune stuff, the antibodies and the inflammatory mediators can increase prostaglandins, which then stimulate your core body temperature set point to increase in the hypothalamus in the brain. This manifests as fever, 
There's also chemo and mechanosensory receptors lining your airways. In addition, you'll have mucus secretion in response to all of these inflammatory mediators. These two effects together can produce efferent signals to your diaphragm, pharynx, intercostal, and neck muscles, which manifests as a cough. And lastly, there's the pathophysiology behind the exudative pleural effusion and the possible empyema. So again, starting with all of this inflammatory response in the alveoli, this can get out to the pleura and damage the pulmonary pleura. Damaging the pulmonary pleura alone can cause an exudative pleural effusion. In addition, in the later stages of this pleural damage, you can have fibrous septa that form localized pockets in the pleura. If this gets really bad, you can have scarring of the pleural membranes. And together, this can cause a complicated pleural fusion and possible empyema. The exudative pleural fusion is diagnosed with one of the following. You either need a pleural or serum protein ratio above 0.5, a pleural to serum LDH ratio of above 0.6, or a pleural LDH that's above two-thirds the upper limit of normal for that lab's serum LDH limit. So that's the definition for an exudative pleural effusion. That alone is not a complicated pleural effusion. If it's complicated, that means that it's exudative with a high white blood count, an LDH that's very high, above 1,000, a pH that's very acidic, low, below 7.2, and a low glucose as well. You can think of this as the manifestations of having bacteria present in your pleural effusion. So you'll have a bunch of white blood cells, you'll have even more LDH, It'll be acidic, and the bacteria will eat up all that glucose in that pleural space. Alternatively, you can also see bacteria directly in the pleural fluid as well. Lastly, the definition of an empyema is a collection of pus that's in the pleural space, and you might even have difficulty obtaining the pleural fluid in the case of an empyema. So this has been a mechanism of disease map for pneumonia. I hope it was helpful, and thank you for listening.